I'd be lying to you if I said that AI hasn't drastically changed the way in which I work. I use it to do so many things that I used to have to do manually, and in today's video, I'm gonna share with you five ways that I use AI to automate my life as a senior developer. Now, the first major way I use AI is to write prompts rather than writing code. Now, this probably isn't what you think it is. What I actually do a lot of times now is rather than writing a simple script where I'm maybe checking some variables or I'm parsing through some text, or I'm doing something that might take me maybe 30 minutes to an hour to write out, I write a very detailed prompt on exactly what I want and I pass data into an LLM and have it kind of act like that code. Now I'll give you a concrete example so you can see what I mean because I understand this isn't quite clear. So I had a long list of emails, I had about 20,000 emails, and I was trying to pass these into kind of like an email list platform, but it wasn't accepting the list because a lot of emails weren't valid. So what I wanted to do was validate all of these emails, but I didn't want to pay some third party service to do that. So I could have written a script where I checked to see if the emails were properly formatted, if they contained swear words, if they looked like a real email or not. You know, there's ways to do email validation pretty manually in code. However, rather than doing that, what I did is I wrote a simple prompt and I said, hey, I'm about to pass you a bunch of emails. I want you to check and see if these emails are valid or not and give me a confidence score on every single email. If the email is above a certain confidence, then we're gonna keep it. If it's not, we're not gonna keep it. So that's what I did. I wrote a prompt and then I passed every single email one by one into the LLM. It gave me that response back and that's how I was able to validate my email list. Now sure, there was still a few emails that weren't 100% valid, but this saved me so much time. And rather than writing the code to validate the emails myself, I just wrote a prompt, used the LLM locally on my computer, passed a bunch of information to it, and there you go. That's my project done. Now, another thing I did recently is a bunch of you guys submitted applications to get one-on-one -on -one tutoring from me. I'm gonna be doing that later on. Don't worry, I'm responding to people right now, but I had tons of different applications. Now, what I wanted is a really fast way to filter out the applications that would be best for tutoring. I had some specific criteria in mind, so I just wrote a really detailed prompt and same thing, I just passed all these applications one by one into the LLM, said, hey, give it a rating from one to 10. And then I took all of the uh, ratings that were above a certain amount, reviewed them manually, and now I have some really great candidates that I'm gonna be giving free one-on-one -on -one tutoring to. LLMs have saved me a ton of time, and I love using them locally to achieve or kind of complete small tasks that I could write myself, but just are so much faster, just pass into the LLM. Now, the next way that I use AI to automate my life is to generate sample data and do basic testing. Now, a lot of times when you're writing an app, you need some sample data, and a lot of times that's user generated. It can be a huge pain to come up with the sample data and sometimes can take you more time than writing the particular feature of the app itself. So what I always do now is I just take whatever schema I need, so maybe it's a GraphQL schema, uh, maybe I have a TypeScript type I want it to confine to, whatever it is, I just give that to an LLM and say, hey, can you generate some sample data? I want 100 records that are unique that have you know this type of variability, blah, 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 whatever it is that I want. Generates all of those records, I can copy and paste them or I can write a little code snippet to do it for me and I can put those directly into my database. I can use them to test an API endpoint. Saves me so much time and a lot of times the data that that generates is significantly more creative and better than I would be able to do on my own. The next thing sometimes I get it to do is actually test particular endpoints by writing different use cases for me or writing uh, kind of input output streams. So sometimes I have maybe programming problems that I'm writing for some students in my course. Now, a lot of you guys know I have a course with Course Careers where I'm teaching software development. This is particularly focused on helping people actually land software developer jobs, which you've already had a lot of success with. You guys can check it out from the link in the description, but the point is I have a lot of different practice questions there. And when I make those practice questions, I need sample inputs and outputs so the students can test their solutions. So what I'll typically do is use something like ChatGPT or some AI solutions to generate those for me. Obviously, I'll check them myself to make sure that they're valid because sometimes this does make mistakes, but it's a really fast way to generate a whole suite of test cases that saves me hours upon hours of time, especially because I have hundreds of different questions that are included in that program. Now, the next way that I've been using AI a lot recently is actually to format requests. Now, I know this sounds a little bit weird, but for me, I hate having to write those stupid curl commands or go into Postman and fill in all the information when I'm testing something like an API endpoint. And a lot of times I know exactly what the request is. I know 
know how to write it, but it's going to take me like two or three minutes to write out the uh, specific request because I have to remember all the syntax. I have to know where to put the headers. I have to know how to format the body and it just takes a lot of time. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just go to an LLM and I'll just say, Hey, I want to send a request to this API endpoint with some sample data like this. Can you format the request for me using curl? Boom, it does that. Sometimes I want to do this in a language like Python or JavaScript. I need like a function that can send the request or maybe get some data out. Same thing. I just use the AI to do that. When it has a set schema and it knows the type of data that you're trying to either get or that you're going to be receiving, it's really good at writing these specific code samples. And even though it only saves me a few minutes, stacking up over time, it's probably saved me hours upon hours at this point. Uh, and it's just quite fast as well. If I go to something like documentation, I see, okay, I want to format a request that looks like this but I need it to be in like a different language or a different format. Just copy it, paste it in the LLM. Hey, I need to send this as a curl request. Can you do that? Boom, gives me the response. There you go. Now, the next thing that I love using AI for is to understand code. Now, quite a few times when I'm reading uh, documentation or maybe someone else's project or I'm trying to make a contribution to a code base, there's some code that I need to understand, but I don't need to know all of the specific details of it. Now, obviously, I can read through all of it myself and I can you know, figure out what it's doing, but that takes a significant amount of time and effort. So what I often do now is I just take that code copy it into an LLM or I use some AI integration in my editor and I just ask it to summarize what that code is doing. This way I can ask specific questions about the code like, hey, does this variable exist? Does the state exist? What's the hook I need to use? What type of data is this returning? Like whatever I actually need to know, I can just ask the LLM. I'm still using my expertise because I have to know what it is that I need to know, but it's just so much faster than me having to comprehend and understand all of it myself. Sometimes I'll even ask it to highlight specific focus areas that I should go and look at and read uh, in specific. And maybe there's one or two lines that are really confusing or use some module that I don't understand. Okay, I'll just take it, paste it into the LLM and say, hey, can you break down step by step what this line of code is doing? So it's significantly helped me save time understanding code. The point is all these things I'm using the uh, AI for, I could do myself, but it's just so much faster to use it to do. And although I am you know, missing out on some learning opportunities by doing that, since I already have this core skill set, it just saves me a significant amount amount of time. Whereas if you are more of a beginner programmer, I'd recommend probably actually doing those tasks rather than relying on AI because it is something that's important to learn and can actually help you use AI more effectively. Now, the last major thing that I use AI for all the time is to boilerplate code and projects. A lot of times now when I work on a project, I know the basic setup. I know kind of the main components I'm going to need. I know some of the main files or at least a general structure of what I want. And yes, there's some details and obviously some logic and some thinking that I need to do, but maybe 50% of the code is just set up and stuff that I've already written in the past. If that's the case, then I know how to write a detailed enough prompt to an LLM to give me at least a very similar type of code that I'm looking for, which I can then tweak very slightly and save myself a significant amount of time. So a lot of days now when I'm writing things like React applications, uh, a few of the components I can just entirely get LLMs to write for me, or I can get it to give me maybe 80% of the finished component, and then I can go in there and tweak some things, or I can just ask uh, different prompts afterwards to have it tweak the code to what I want. Now, the main thing that I've noticed is that the reason I'm able to use LLMs and AI so effectively is because I already have that programming skill. I already know how to write all of the code that it's writing for me, so I know when it's doing it correctly and it's doing it incorrectly. I also know how to ask it in the way that it will give me what I want because I know exactly what it is that I want. I think that's a lot of things that more inexperienced programmers don't realize is that the way that you're able to use AI effectively is to actually already know what the AI is going to do for you. To have the experience by just very quickly looking at the code it's generating, if it's correct or incorrect, because you've already written code like that in the past, that's what allows you to really effectively use these AI tools and to really completely supercharge your workflow. The more knowledge you have, the better you can use LLMs and AI. Not saying you can't use them as a more novice programmer, but the more experience you get, just the more it's going to increase your efficiency because you know exactly what you want it to give you and how to use it the best. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. I just wanted to quickly share with you five main ways that I've been using AI. Obviously, I use it in a lot of other ways as well, but I thought these might be helpful and some ideas that you guys could take advantage of and maybe try out on your own. Let me know in the comments down below, how are you using AI? Have you seen it have a huge increase in your efficiency and productivity? Let me know, and I will see you in another video.